Welcome guys to the United Roses YouTube channel. I'm Felix and I'm back uh, for you with another deck profile. I played the Swiss Open in Switzerland in Bern yesterday. Uh, it was an 8 round tournament with 195 players and uh, I somehow managed to win this event. So uh, I'm very happy and I'm gonna present you the deck profile. A bit of information before uh, what I played because uh, it's the beginning of the new format uh, with Rage of the Abyss and the very expensive uh, Azamina cards, the uh, Mochami Foros. I decided not to invest a lot of money. I decided to play like my comfort uh, pick, Telement. And yeah, it worked out. My expectations were very different. I just thought I want to have like a good time having a bit of fun and resolving some grass and expected to go like extra drop early, but it went a lot different and I'm super happy about that. And before we are going into the cards, uh, I'm gonna give a few shout outs. So uh, first and biggest shout outs uh, to Micha for like uh, driving me, for hosting me the whole weekend. It was a uh, super big support. Then uh, shout outs to my team, United Gozos. They're always uh, supporting me, uh, helping me with deck building, theory and everything. Uh, special shout outs to Tim, who was not believing in this deck for YCS still, even though I told him it's like a really, really good pick. And then he ended bubbling with Tenpai. And yeah, then shout outs to Danilo. Danilo, my uh, really good friend. I certainly had to play him yesterday in round six. He's like my tailor mentor. He told me everything about the stack in the last year. So I learned a lot from him. Then uh, shout outs to Zio for uh, a little bit of uh, theory on like Thursday night because he's also playing 60 card tailor And uh, yeah, we discussed some card choices and text and like static patterns and stuff. And that really helped. Then uh, shout outs to my testing circle, to uh, Rocket Hideout, uh, many, many of my good friends are there, especially to Vincent, Micha and Emilia, because they also helped me with deck building on like Thursday and Friday. Then shout outs to my friends from Freiburg, uh, where I lived for a long time, and some of them went with me to the event yesterday. And yeah, it was a really good time. We had some good pizza on Friday with uh, Michael Stehle. And shout outs to our 11 year old uh, Paul, who uh, went to the tourney. He went 5 3 and also had like a really good record on the playmat. And lastly, uh, shout out to my girlfriend Isabel for always supporting me and that I can even uh, travel to those events. And I think that's enough. And we're gonna start with the main deck now. Okay, just gonna get this to the side. And we start with the main, uh, main deck. It's a 60 card element. So it's a lot of different engines. Uh, at the beginning, it's just like the tier cards. That's like nothing, nothing new. The three names, triple Rhino Heart and uh, triple Tirkash. So that's like all the monsters. Then we have the tier spells and traps. I decided to play Triple Scream, uh, Triple Salik, and one Meta Noise because I wanted to keep the good mills uh, on like a very high level, uh, have as many tier engine cards as possible. So every single mill, two mills, three was like a tier cache with a Rhino Heart Sent tier cache with like a Shiren or Scream. Should hopefully hit something. We have like more good uh, mill cards later, but like, uh, yeah, the engine is like really, really big. And then something a bit unusual is I only played two Pelerina, the Tailman Fields, but a really, really good card just got recently banned in Master Duel because it's so strong. But I'm playing a lot of field spells and a lot of ways to search other field spells. So uh, last uh, day, last minute, I cut one down and I don't regret it. It's a really good card, but you have so many ways to search it. So I think it's fine at two, but uh, maybe it's, it's, it's not the biggest uh, game changer. Then the next engine is uh, a little Kashtira package. So I played two Fenrir, two Unicorn, one Field Spell and one Birth. Uh, I decided to uh, upset from just the two Fenrirs because I think the two Fenrirs and maybe one uh, planet is kind of necessary in tier because they're all searching Killam and Kashtira, so engine. But uh, the Unicorn and the uh, Birth is new. And uh, I decided to play that because of the new uh, Mulchamis, especially Mulchami Foveros. Uh, that you can play a bit of like control with the Kashira cards and like ripping the extract of the opponent is like, really really strong getting rid of like resources like the second phantom of Ubel or against the only Promethean princess or stuff it's even a plan b against shifter if you get sh uh, shifter from tempai i'm gonna go over my matches later um but yeah the cash cards really really overperformed and i'm super super happy that i included some on the last days so we have tillaments we have Kashira. And the next engine is the Horus engine, because we play 60 cards, we want to mill as much as possible. And I decided to play five names, the three MZT is kind of obvious because you have so many good discards. And then two more names. I was always siding out to a Mutev if I go second, because you don't want to break on them. But like the cards are really, really good. And they're even better if their opponents don't know what they do and they play into the on-field effects. If something gets removed by play, you can like either send something, draw, or like add back. 
and the cards are just really, really crazy. And if you manage to keep your uh, spells uh, from horrors on field, even if your board gets cracked, you have a lot of follow up and you can usually like uh, OTK on the, on the crack pack. And for that, I decided to play Triple Zark because again, you have many, many uh, cards you want to send, not even for card effect, just for cost is fine as well, uh, from your hand to your grave. And then one field spell, because as I said, I don't want to play too many field spells and there's a lot of ways to search the field spells. I played like three uh, Horus field spells in the beginning, but I had to make space, especially for the Kashtira cards. The next engine uh, is the Fieldsmith package. It's kind of small, uh, but uh, I think still it's very, very necessary. I played three Engraver in the past, now it's down to two Engraver and uh, Lurry Truck, but it gives you so much grind game, so much engine access. If you get hand trapped a few times on like your Horus cards with Zombie Vampire on your Tillman cards, then you can just take any two monsters, go into Moon, go into Fieldsmith Engine, and that's like a rank six exceed. And as you can see later, I'm gonna play the Pilgrim Reaper, so it's more mill. And yeah, the cards are good. The only problem is with the Fiends of Exodus cards, uh, as I'm going to show you, is that they play really bad in Tavoros. But I think that was the trade off I had to do. I knew it was not that good. I uh, tried to play, uh, not so, I didn't try to not play those cards and play like the King of the Swamp engine uh, in, instead. But I think they're necessary and their power level is just way too strong. Then uh, the next engine are like the cards you want to mill or you want to discard. Uh, like the two shufflers, I think they're just very obvious, like long, long time uh, tier cards you always play. And since they're like the last time, uh, last cards were not banned or, or limited. Then we have the Rainbow Bridge Field Spell Add package with two Rainbow Bridges you want to uh, send, discard, or mill, and the little turtle you have to add. And I think this card is really, really crazy, even though it's once per duel. You can add any of the three different field spells I play. It's so much diversity, it's, it's, it's getting your engine rolling. You can most often search the Horus field spell, discard something, get Vampire on, get resources. The turtle is also an Aqua, so even if you build it, it's not the end of the day. You can shuffle it back for Kaleido Heart, and the engine is like really, really, really good. And then we have uh, two Trivi Karmas also as a good mill, and you can search like any any Tailwind card with that. And most often I'm searching the Tailwind Feeds for the Pelerino with that. And now we are coming to the fun part uh, of the deck, and I decided to play 60 cards because of this card. It got uh, recently unbanned, the grass looks greener, an amazing card. And in most scenarios, if you go first or second, you can mill between 15 and 25 cards. I think the biggest mill I did was like mill 25 this uh, this tournament and it's just an insta when you can trigger like five trigger effects you get all the resources for horror cards for fiendsmith cards for your field spell your cash and your tier engine this is just like the, the heart and soul of the deck and like the reason why i started playing tier again post ban list and especially after our producer got banned and since one grass is pretty unlikely to draw i think i draw it like once or twice hard draw but you have uh together with the grass three left arm offering and three triple, uh, triple tactics trust to search this card. I think I never resolved left arm because it's a really high cost to uh, banish two cards from your hand. Uh, and I always had it out going second, but I think I did like thrust two or three times for grass, even in games where I had an unplayable hand with like just a Keldo or a Kashtira monster to bait a monster effect. And luckily that bait worked out. I was able to thrust for grass, mill 25 and just get completely rolling, even though I had like four dead cards in my hand. So I think Thrust definitely overperformed. Left arm is a bit of a question mark because I always had it out, but yeah. If you see grass, you usually win, especially if the decks you play against are at around 40 cards. And then I have some uh, power spells, some anti-hand trap cards. Uh, first is the Black Goat. That's usually the card you want to mill. Or if you get shifted and you have Thrust, you want to set it off Thrust. It's like one of the best cards against Tempai. I think it won me like two games against Tempai. If I got shifted or drolled or Fuvorost or something, I can uh, source for it, set a black goat, and then you can just like chain black goat called Chundra to the Chundra effect in hand or to the Sangan Kaiman. And without uh, Chundra, they have a really, really hard time to OTK you. And if, it mill, uh, if you mill it, you can also like call the on field effect of Chundra. You can call the on field effect of Trident against Tempai. Often I can call Caesar or, or, or Rage against Jubel if I go second, or like on field effect of Samsara Lotus, Snake Hash, whatever you want. It's like so many options, and I think it's definitely a mandatory one off because you can also send it with uh, three foolish burial goods. It's also another super, super strong card. You can send engine, you can use it as a breaker, send Black God. Um, yeah, I played two for a long time because I didn't want my mills to be uh, inflated. Um, uh, conflicting with like milling too many power spells 
but I talked to especially Vincent on like Thursday and he convinced me to play three and I think it was a really, really good decision. And the other power spells are one terraforming for all the different field spells I play, one called by the grave to play around hand traps, especially Ash, since you don't want to get Ash on your grass, but also against Shifter, whatever going second, it's also really good on like Flumber, Chromisian Princess, Phantom of Jubel, Yama, many, many options, and then three talents. And I think all of those cards are really, really good. Apart from the left arm, I don't think I would have changed anything in the main deck. Okay, that's the main deck. Let's go to the extra deck. Uh, we have the one Telemann Fusion. Only Telemann's Kaleido Heart, Kid Colors is sadly banned. And if you don't play King of the Swamp, you cannot play Roll Colors, even though I really love this card. This card is super, super strong, uh, giving you engine if you pop it with Pellerine or spin back opponent's cards to play around like effects of like Vajudras who is destroying another card if it gets sent to the grave or getting rid of the Yubel so you can attack even though there's a nightmare pain. You are looping this with Salik with the shufflers, the field spell, it's like the heart and soul of, of, of your deck and of your end board. And then we're having two other fusions. In the King of the Swamp uh, version I would not play Dracos Apelia, but I think here it's mandatory because you always get the Necro Princess into the graveyard uh, during the Fiends of Combo, so you need a way to make another end board piece. And the Mud Dragon is just there to make uh, Bahamut Shark into totally awesome, as I'm going to show you soon. And it's also really good. I think I had the two games against Rescue Ace, where this was the whole match on the field, calling, as I said here, Water, or then calling later Dark, uh, getting rid of all the Rescue Ace traps. So that was like a really, really powerful card. Then we have some exceeds. We have the Pilgrim Reaper. I'm doing that in the uh, Fiends of Lime. And Zombie Vampire for the Horus cards, mill 4, mill 5, get your engine rolling, get as many resources into the grave as possible. Amazing cards, and yeah, I made them, I think, every single game. Then, Bahamo Trout and Toad, part of your end board, our favorite, uh, favorite frog, I would always say. Um, yeah, as soon as I have uh, double Rhino Heart or Rhino Heart and Mud Dragon, that's how you usually make uh, Bahamo Shark, gets this on the board. Omni Negate, super strong, and you can add back. Uh, tier cash in the opponent's turn as well, so you get resources and uh, more chance to mill. Then uh, two links with SP and Sprint. SP just generic part of your end board if you need to get rid of something. Sometimes you just need a link too. And Sprint is really, really good to send Merly to Fusion Summon and uh, for some later option as well I'm going to show you where I'm not that proud of. And then we have the Fiendsmith Engine, kind of six cards, Moon. Any time you get hand trapped on like your tier engine, on your Horus engine, just get two, two bodies out. Go on to Moon, Requiem, Sequence, Necro Crypt, make those cards to make your Pilgrim Reaper, uh, or you like only need those stuff for. And if you have more Fiendsmith Engine or even more bodies, because usually I'm doing a Requiem if, uh, if Engraver effect, put back the Moon, summon back uh, the Engraver, then I make with uh, Engraver and Necro Crypt, I make Pilgrim Reaper. Then the Moon is in the extra deck. If I have later in the combo after like the mill 4 and then mill 5, I have enough bodies, I can summon Moon again, then summon the Sequence, and then still use the Sequence to make. Yeah, DS Array is also like a super big part of your end board if you have like a lot of engine, part of your grind game. I don't always make it turn one, but like turn two, turn three to OTK to get like field control and the grind game is super, super strong. And yeah, you can get a uh, resource spec. And then the honorary Fiendsmith card, even though it's not called Fiendsmith, is Underworld Goddess, an amazing card. Uh, I uh, have to give uh, shoutouts to, to Pac and, and TSX1 uh, for that. Using the effect, the on field effect of Moon caught so many people off guard. Just calling Moon, targeting their monster, and they're like, hmm, what are you doing here? And then they just say, okay, and you make Goddess with like two of your monsters and uh, three of their monsters or two of their monsters is just really, really strong. <coughs> okay, that's the extra deck. And then we are coming to the side deck last. I'm setting two more tier engine cards, one counter trap for going first and one heartbeat. For certain matchups where you need back row removal, I'm setting it against Tempire at a game where my opponent flipped rivalry on me and I was able to banish a Trivikama off the grave, uh, what I kept there, and add a heartbeat to out it. And sometimes you can also set it going first because with the crime, the three Salik and Metal Noise, you have five traps, and if you mill them, you can add them back and sometimes even end on all three traps. And I think the tier engine cards are just uh, really important. I even thought about main deck and heartbeat, but I think in the side they are totally fun. Then we have Breakers. Since I play 60 cards with Thrust and Talents in the main deck, there is no, well, not a lot of uh, space for non engine, especially not for hand traps. So I decided to play the most impactful Breakers as possible. So I played three Dark Ruler, three Sphere Mode, since you can play with your Kashtira cards, with your Fitzmuth cards, and you often play without your normal zone. 
and Sensory uh, Mochami Brulia. Uh, I don't play Fulveros because I was not able to get it because it's a really expensive card. Probably would have played Fulveros over Isosus or one of those, but all of those cards went really, really crazy. So I think Breakers are just a good, uh, good choice here. And in the end, four cards. Like this is a 60 card combo deck, uh, it takes a long, long time. And uh, yeah, we are playing three Dogwood and Scatter Shot. Dogwood is a card, as you can maybe see in the feature match in the finals. I said it's in 30 minutes into the match, just when we started game two. And even though it was against Jubal, Jubal plays a lot of zero attack monsters. He gave me life points to 25k and was never able to deal any damage. And Scatter Shot is like your win con in time. I don't like the current timeout rules, but. Here, I'm not playing hand traps, my opponents do 15 minute combos, I take 15 to 25 minutes to break the opponent's uh, game. So, yeah, that's just uh, how it was. Yeah, then that's it for the cards. Uh, thank you for watching uh, the deck profile, it was a lot of fun for me, a really great tournament, and stay tuned for the next one.